<laughs> all right. So your name uh, isn't. Sorry. Well, we, we talked about that already, I think. <laughs> name inspired by Japanese goth metal band during yes. great. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's all I got. No, no. put them in the bloopers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all in. There's no going back. This video is brought to you by Gamefly. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's show. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are a black and thrash metal band known for being huge proponents of inclusivity both in social media and the music scene. Their EP, Robbed Intentions, is coming out soon. Please welcome to the channel, Buried by Vengeance. Hi guys. Hello. 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 Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Clink, clink, clunk. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> and before we get going, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the places I'm at online and what I'm doing and also ways you can support the channel if you want. And uh, yeah, we'll have a good time. Before I get into anything, why Buried My Vengeance? See, um, well... Me and Sarah were actually in a different band together until we parted ways with that that uh-huh. band's member, uh-huh. and uh, we're in for a name. And uh, "Buried by Vengeance" is actually from a Duran Gray song called "Lie Buried with a Vengeance." Nice. Yeah, it's a Japanese goth metal band for anyone who doesn't know, and they're really awesome. But yeah, "Buried by Vengeance" just uh, just fits. Cool. For me, it's because I like to keep the vengeance in the front, put it in the back of my head. <laughs> bury it in the back of my head. Okay. <laughs> I was just playing. I was just wondering because it, it, it also kind of sounds like maybe just a random band name generator album or title where maybe. you're like, give me three words that, that are metal. Buried by vengeance. Buried by vengeance. That works. <laughs> yeah. So before we get into kind of more like band centric uh, questions, I have a question. Almost spilled. I have a question that I want to ask. That I, I ask of all my prey, um, and it, it you OG room sixers will know what I'm going to ask here. <laughs> I want to talk about earliest musical influence, and but what I mean by that is, what is that moment you remember going, "I want to do that"? I never really had a moment where I said I wanted to do that. I've always had I feel rhythm stuck in me, and I just needed to get it out. You know what I'm saying? So once I finally got it out. I was able to apply it to skins. So skins, I was playing the drums, man. <laughs> that boy got the boogie woogie. How, 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 how. And then it, it got to come out. <laughs> he, he will not stop boogie woogie, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Especially in practice, right, Sarah? Right. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Sarah? Help it. <laughs> um, for me, my favorite band is Amana Marth. And I first heard their single, Twilight of the God. I think it was like a... EP clip or something for Metal Hammer. It was like included in the Metal Hammer magazine. Okay. It's like, I really want to do that because that song rocks. Right on. So, wow. Because that's not exactly on the radio. No. Yeah. <laughs> so the deep cut. Wow. How yes? Uh, for me, it started when I was 18 years old after after high school. I started playing Guitar Hero after seeing it at Best Buy. Just, oh, this is pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah. And then eventually, it's a, then eventually Guitar, Guitar Hero told me on the loading screen... At some point, you should think about buying a real guitar. Oh, wow. Oh, really? And I did, but I sucked at guitar, so I went to a guitar center for the first time and saw a bass and realized I'm better at bass. There you go. Yes. Okay. Less strings. Uh, that's that's well, a whole I mean, other fight. Uh, just, well, just one less string. Just one less. Oh, you got a five piece. Uh, five string. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. In my case, makes it, a five string makes it easier for me to sing and play at the same time. Four string is doable, but it's a lot more difficult. <laughs> right on. Now, I believe we're missing one person from the band. Nope. Mm-hmm. Oh, a three piece. Okay, three piece. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought it was a four piece. Right on. <laughs> um, y- your EP, Robbed Intentions, is coming soon, right? It is. Where are we at in that process? Mm, let's see. We're working on. Let's see. Still editing some of the some of the songs, but we're we're still not finished recording our last song on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but we're we're, we're like way more than halfway done though. So so it's going to be out soon for sure. You're d- and you guys are doing all the uh, editing? We're doing everything. Yeah, yeah. everything. Right, right, you know. Are you going to send it somewhere to be mastered? Or? Hmm? Uh, no, we do it all ourselves. After that, we're just going to you know put it on all the streaming platforms after that. Cool. Yeah. 
definitely check the uh, social media down there in the description that I have listed for them. So you can find out when that posts or when that's uh, when that's good to go. And uh, if you want a review of it, let me know. Hmm. Hint, hint. <laughs> All right. So your name uh, isn't... Sorry. Well, we, we talked about that already, I think. <laughs> name inspired by Japanese goth metal band Darren yes. Gray. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's all I got. No, uh, just put them in the bloopers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all in. There's no going back. Now, how long have you been buried by vengeance? Uh, about almost two years now. Okay, almost with this, these three people? Yes. Original yeah, a little under, yeah, a little under two years. years. Cool. Yeah. No, it's longer than that. Oh, yeah? Was well, it almost two years? Uh, a year and a half at the most. So you've done... The original lineup. You've right done now. a few shows then together. Oh, yes. oh yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I wanted to ask, what's your favorite show memory as... Buried by Vengeance. And it could be one where it went way off the rails or, you know, <laughs> everything. You checked off a bunch of rock star wish list things or what? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. about I'm think- that I'm one. thinking too. I guess I can go um, first. <laughs> uh, that one time I, made, I, I, made a jo- I, I said a joke on stage. I said, what is the difference between a drum machine and a drummer? And oh. the answer is, one keeps a steady beat. The other one's how to sleep with your girlfriend. But everyone in the car was laughing, except his girlfriend actually booed at that joke. Literally like, boo. And I'm like, who the fuck just booed at that? Oh, well, of course you, boo. You're the drummer's girlfriend. That was pretty funny. <laughs> She's just sad because it's true. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Probably. Man, I don't know. Probably uh, getting in the mosh on one of them shows. <laughs> Just playing with, uh, just listening to other people, um, or other bands, I mean, and kind of just jumping in a mosh is kind of, is fun oh, for mosh. me. I heard Mahjong. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mahjong. Because I want to see that at a metal show. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, uh, just hopping in mosh pits, I think, would have to be a good memory and just a continuous, like, thing that I'll try to continue to do. Especially but, when you were on the show, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> I'd say for me, probably opening for Elysium. I thought mm. that was a really big show and a really big step for us. Right. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That's, that was, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where was that? The Triple Bs? Triple Bs. Yeah. Triple, yeah. Triple it was, B. yeah. It was Allegiant yeah. and the Zenith Passage, too. That was yeah, those guys. Those guys are badass. I remember seeing the flyer for that show. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Triple B is backstage billiards on fremont street it's mm-hmm. kind of the slightly smaller venue next to fremont country club it's all the same people mm-hmm. um they put on some amazing shows there and then i've played there so you know <laughs> 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 it wasn't an amazing show but anyway um b- before we move on i wanted to ask one more weird kind of question if you don't mind <laughs> mm-hmm. okay what's the one uh, no, regret's the wrong word. What's the one moment you remember thinking, oh, I wish I had played that part different or, or sung that part different? Is there, a, is there a moment where you're like, ah? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think for me, it's just when I know I could have made a better fill or... Um, but there isn't one in particular? Right. No, not one in particular. I don't have a particular one. I, th- I feel like it's more like a generalization for Okay. Like if I'm playing and I feel like I messed yeah. up and I in my own head I'm going, damn. But you know, you just keep going. Mm-hmm. So you don't yeah. you don't try to make it noticeable, you know. Right. But then again, we're all we're all our own worst critics though. Well yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 If you don't know this, musicians are so riddled with self doubt and, and imposter syndrome <laughs> and perfectionism. And I yeah. thought it was just me. No. no. <laughs> try being a YouTuber. Anyway. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll say I think for me, um, <laughs> I always sometimes think I could have played a solo differently or used different techniques. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but right on. Yeah. Um, now the EP—that's your first release, right? Uh, well, as an EP, yes, we do have a single out. It's called Bay Victus. That's been out. That's been out for. Uh, that's been out for a while now on all, all, all the major streaming platforms, and we get we're getting some pretty good reviews on it. Yeah, a, lot, a lot of good feedback from it. Cool. Yeah. Um, so what we're gonna do before we move on. I'm getting a little low. I think we're going to have a quick little uh, little drink break here. But also, we're going to hear a message from future now. Josh. <laughs> Who's break? Uh, Who's break? Who's break? And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. If you're like me, your free time comes at a high price. Once you factor in work, family, friends, and unexpected plans, it can be hard to find some me time for yourself. That's where video games come in. But what to play? Well, just like me, you might have commitment issues when it comes to buying video games. 
Good news! Gamefly is here to beat your personal time boss levels. Gamefly is the leading online video game rental service in the United States. They deliver the widest selection and availability of games for all the major consoles. Some of the benefits of membership include value. Memberships start for as low as $9.50. Selection. Gamefly has the largest selection of video games anywhere with thousands of titles, including all the new releases and classics. Convenience. Gamefly delivers games to your door. Shipping is free both ways, and there are no late fees. Savings. Gamefly members get free shipping on products such as controllers, accessories, and collectibles. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to save even more money by checking out their pre-played game sale. You'll get the convenience of services like Netflix designed for busy gamers like you and me. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Gamefly for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's video. We're back! And if that sponsor spot interested you at all, help me out and help yourself out, save some money, click the link down in the description for it. Um, I don't know what it was, and I hope you uh, found it interesting. Moving on. A couple more questions here. Um, make sure that you check out all their social media because you want to check out where they have their music online and also where they're going to be performing. Um, people. <laughs> <laughs> Folks. Let's talk. This is a, a whole big rabbit hole we could go down, but let's talk gear. Mm, all right. Yes, the drummer's like, mm. Yes. <laughs> Gear horn. Mm. But um, I wanted to ask, what do you rock at a show? Okay. Uh, well, uh, I am really, I have this unhealthy obsession with Fender. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Uh, yeah. I only have one. <laughs> well, uh, I do use a Fender ja uh, an active Fender Jazz on stage, with, mm. which is pretty cool. But I also got, I got, you know, a Fender, uh, Fender Rumble <clears throat> 500. Uh, you know, fender. Fender, fender stack. I even even the sta even my stand is a fender. <laughs> Are you sponsored by them? I wish. That's not fender know. though, huh? That's not fender. That is. <laughs> Hit him up, fender. fender. <laughs> yes, it is fender. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's a little inside joke. It's not, it's not yeah. a squire. Uh, <laughs> square. It is. Hey, you laugh. I have a Fender Strat Squire bullet upstairs. Okay. Hey, well, you so know, it hey, Squire is good. Like if you want to start to, to start, it's it, good. It, it was the first electric. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But I've, I've been playing bass for what is it, eighteen years now. Right. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But it's an actual Fender, and it says Fender on the bridge, so it is a real Fender, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. Shots fired. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, no, yeah, under no, Rumble Five Hundred. Rumble 500 on stage, and well, for shows without DI, I use a little <laughs> a Fender, a Fender uh, cab, a 115 cab for the ones that don't have DI. But the ones with DI, I mean, all I need is the is the combo amp. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, and then as far as far as singing goes, most of the time I just use whatever the house has. Yeah, makes sense. So. Um, I use a Ibanez Zyphos. I've had that guitar since I was like 16. I love that it changes colors. It's a really weird shape. So it's really hard to find a hardcover case for <laughs> yep. it. But um, I also use a Boss Katana on stage. That's basically it. No, no pedals? No pedals right no. now, no. We only, I don't really use any other effects besides distortion. Huh. I don't know. Usually guitar players are like, I got I know. three pedal boards. I know, boards. I know, I know. <laughs> All right. I'm the odd person. <laughs> You're not a person? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, the interview just got interesting, you know. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, uh, shout out to my Uncle Denny, man. He gave me a sweet old 80s piece. that had, It was, I think it was a nine piece, but I reduced it down to either a five or a six because it just was too much. All right. Um, what brand is it? It's a Tama, old school red glitter. Nice. Um, it looks like he had a funk show, but it's cool because it's... it's not something you'd, you'd see at a, every day at a metal show, really. Right. Um, <laughs> Same with my bass, It dude. sucks. Yeah, my okay. cymbals got stolen uh, uh, at a ooh. show, so I only run like two. I still need to get a ride. You know, money problems, man. Who don't got money problems? <laughs> but, um, you know, man, I, it, it sucks, but it is what it is. I make do with what I got, mm -hmm. you know. But I just like to play music. <laughs> well, hey, anybody watching that can hook them up with sponsorships. There you go. Yeah. Mm. Um, it always, it, it's always interesting when I ask that question. I don't ask it too often, but every so often I ask that question, and I hear some really interesting things. But um, it's always interesting, like, how, is that, how do you make that sound, which is buried by vengeance, you know? Right. So, <laughs> cool. 
from there, we talked about uh, your favorite show memory. Is there any uh, dream shows, dream gigs you got that you're like, oh, someday we want to do that? Well, I'm slowly but surely trying to convince these guys to play shows in South America because oh. I have, because I happen to be South American. I'm Chilean. Really? Yes. I think uh, a Room Six uh, alumni, Manzilla, are playing. Uh, yes, they yes, are, yes. They're playing with Saxon. Yeah. yeah it's so cool. Oh, I'm sorry. I think they just played Sao Paulo. I uh, know yeah. they played. They played in Chile too. Yeah. yeah shout out to you guys. They're, yeah, 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 they're doing. <laughs> they're posting, and I'm, I'm just like, you are yes. living the dream, I know, guys. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. Yep. They were my first year Christmas episode. Which was hilarious to see Mazilla dressed in like ugly Christmas sweaters and <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. But in my case, oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm Chilean and Chile does have a pretty big metal scene. I'm, I'm, family, I'm family friends with the original drummer of Death Yell. They've been around since the 80s. They're still around, but he's not in band anymore. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, but they, 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 they do have a good scene right now. Like bands like Critical Defiance, War Chest. Right on. It's, it's definitely possible one day. I mean, I got plenty of family there. So. Let, let me ask you a question. I, I wasn't planning on asking this, but <laughs> since you're Chilean... <laughs> Where do you go to eat, like, South American food here in, in Vegas? Here. Uh, well... There is, uh, we do know a lady who used to own a, uh, like a food truck or something. She makes really good empanadas. Mm. But as far as Hispanic in general, there's this good Cuban place called um, El Bolero. I definitely recommend that. Where's that? Uh, it's on uh, Decatur and wa- Decatur and 95. Oh, out there. Uh, yes. Wow. Well, yeah. I, I live pretty close to that, yeah. I live, oh, yeah, in, I live in Henderson. Food, yeah. It's a bit of a hype. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's plenty okay. of places here, but I don't know about Chilean places, but I, yeah, Cuban food, and there's some places that have like Peruvian food as well. Right. Free food tangent. Sorry, mm-hmm. I, I gotta ask this before we get on to you. Havana Grill. What's your take? I haven't, I haven't heard of it. Really? Uh, I haven't heard of it either. Uh, uh, okay, it so it's here? Brazilian food. Okay, mm-hmm. and it's amaze balls. They they have a sister property <laughs> which is kind of like a, a smaller kind of cafe version on the strip, and I don't remember what casino okay. or what hotel. But um, yeah, Havana Grill. It, it's really good. They have live. Uh, Music and dancing there as well. Oh, dancing! What should, you, what should I get if I go? My wife's favorite is the um, ropa de, ropa fiera or uh, dirty laundry. Uh, <laughs> ropa sucia. Well, it's different. In, uh, well, apparently, it's, it's different in Brazil. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's Brazil. Different. Different. Ropa, 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 they, they speak they speak Portuguese. Ropa vieja, yeah. and it, it's That's like the basically shredded clothes. meat. Old yeah, yeah, old clothes. It's shredded <laughs> meat. You get the uh, you get the the moros, which is like the half black beans and half rice. Oh, you get the sweet canes. Yeah, oh god go. damn anyway now I'm <laughs> hungry but, but I was just wondering how Chilean food was represented here and it says um, it's not like it is really well I mean honestly not to because I, I was born and raised in California I, I lived it for 20 years and there was a place in California called Rincon Chileno which is pretty good it's it's a Chilean deli alright but um, but here yeah there's not too much attention towards it but unfortunately but but this lady we go to yeah she definitely does she does make great empanadas for sure <laughs> Okay. Yes. Um, I'm gonna get down on an empanada. I'm. <laughs> I'm ambivalent. But you know what? Back to music. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. um, there's gonna be a whole tangent section, but uh, that's okay. So you two, uh, what was the question? Um, <laughs> our dream show. Dream, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, yeah. I already answered that. I'm, I'm answer a that. professional. <laughs> so <laughs> um, for me, it'd be playing Wacken in Germany. Ooh. The huge open air festival that has like Sabaton, Epica. Etc. Bakken or Waken? Or is Bakken another I one? I don't know if I'm Bakken. pronouncing it right or wrong, so pardon me, German, but... Let us Bakken. know in the comments Bakken. if you're if you're German. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm an expert. Waken. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just... I don't know. All right. <laughs> Next! Honestly, it'd be tight if we played with Three Inches of Blood. I don't know if you know... Who I'm not familiar is. with them, but they don't know me either, so... We're very uh, power metal type of band. Where are they from? Um, I, I think Canadians. Uh, I think, Canadians? Uh, I think the Canucks. The... Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, they're tight. Power metal. I love power metal. Um, yeah. Me too. My, Me too. Drum, my drumming, it kind of is inspired a little bit more <laughs> right towards on. that. That uh, actually leads quickness. me... That actually leads me to my next question. Segway. Okay. What, in your opinion, differentiates blackened thrash metal from just thrash metal? Or black metal? Um... Well, in our case, um, 
My my vocals for one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been told I've been told that I sound like Tom G. Warrior, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, in fact, I, I made this joke. So so when I'm practicing, I use I use this uh, reverb pedal that I have, and um, <laughs> you know, it's basically um, you know, singing basically if Celtic Frost sang Bay Victus, mm-hmm. it was only this. Okay. If if it was Cold Lake, Bay Victus. If it was Monotheist, <laughs> Bay Victus. <laughs> If it was um, to make Ethereum, the Victus. <laughs> yes, but yeah. also, but also, um, wait, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Black and what, oh, okay. what is what makes black and thrash metal different than black metal um, or thrash metal? Right. Uh, well, basically, so the well, the black metal is definitely my vocals for sure, and some some of the, some of the rhythm too which sounds pretty dark compared to like I, I guess you could say compared to like Sodom or Celtic Cross or Venom, okay, you know, or, or Creator as well. Yeah, so speaking of power metal, we actually covered a Halloween song, too. Mm-hmm. They said we could, so we decided to, which is pretty awesome of them. I was going to ask, did you get permission? <laughs> uh, yes, I did. Here's what happened. So when me and Sarah were in the other, were in the other band, uh, I got on your bass. I was playing a Halloween song on a face on an Instagram reel. And uh, I didn't expect Halloween to actually see the right. see, see the reel. So I, said, so I messaged him and I said, hey, guys, uh, while we have your attention, can we cover one of your songs? And they were like, sure, you can cover whatever you want. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So we did. <laughs> right on. Yes. Yeah. The next step, though, is, I mean, like, you know, playing it, playing it live is one thing, but recording it is another, so... Usually is, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When it comes to that point, though, it's like, hey, just you guys know we're going to record this song, so you guys are just cool with that, right? <laughs> yeah. My, uh, yeah. My, my second album, I, for whatever reason, said, I'm going to do everything myself, <laughs> except the drum kit, which is weird, because my, the bass player of my, my, the first bass player for that band that I went through five iterations of... <laughs> was the engineer, and he played drums better than I did. So it was like, <laughs> all right, man, it's your drum set, let's go. But um, I did everything, and for some reason I have a song in there that I did, I did like seven guitar solo takes, as you know. Uh, you know, I did you're know. like, okay, yeah. well, let me try again. <laughs> and I, for whatever reason, I said, hey, look, what if you play them all once? One of those studio moments, you know? <laughs> and that's what's in their final take. Oh, oh shit. A little bit of tweaking, but yeah. And I, So I'm never going to be able to replace that live. Right. You know? I, I, I couldn't ever. And uh, I don't even think I, yeah. if I play live, it's like just me and my acoustic. So yeah. I can't even, <laughs> but yeah, that always, I, I, I had one of those moments. I asked him, uh, one of the best pieces of advice, BJ, if you're watching this, please reach out to me. I miss you, buddy. Um, <laughs> BJ Therio. Uh He told, I said, uh, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I kind of want to be able to be able to re- reproduce what I record, mm-hmm. you know? And he said, why don't you make it sound the best you possibly can? Right. And then worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where, why I ended up with seven guitar solos. So. <laughs> uh, so we got everybody's dream gig, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Power metal. Yes. So, oh, no. I'm sorry. We asked about uh, the black and versus. Oh, yes. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah. So def- definitely like, like the rhythms, the darker rhythms than usual. Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, like if, if you listen to, to like earlier Creator and earlier Sodom, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely blackened for sure, but they just I guess they didn't mention it for some reason. Maybe it's just the way it was back then. Right. Well, yeah. Now, bear in mind, metal has so many subgenres. Oh yes. Oh my so god. Oh like yes. Any other. But yes. with, so my limited understanding of those genres is that uh, thrash metal is generally way higher intensity. Um, I think. Um, oh, okay. Well, it was, in my opinion, basically, like the way I see it, it's uh, basically one step above the ladder from heavy metal. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah. But but the black end, I would say it's like it's like thrash metal, but you made it darker. Kind yes. Of. Yes. Uh, cool. And that gives maybe maybe three steps above the ladder. Cool. Three steps. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Climbing that rung. Yeah. Go go with like bands like Behemoth or um, you know yeah Behemoth or what else uh, Vader band and bands like that you know. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> Last question. You made it. Yay! Yay! Yay. So, uh, and again. If you want to be on the channel like them, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up down in the description. If you want to know more about them, check out down in the, the description for their social media. Um, I was wondering, let's circle back to that er- first question about your earliest musical influence. Oh, okay? Yeah. Oh, We're going to talk to little you. <laughs> <laughs> really, this question is designed to talk to like like new musicians or people who are like, how do I be like you? You know? Well, in that case. And so... Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you in uniform? TikTok, anybody? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you when you said that, had that moment of I want to be like that. 
except you, because you apparently just always had the boogie woogie in them. But um, <laughs> what is one thing that you wish you, you could have told yourself? Hey, you're gonna need to know about this, and it's not. It doesn't have to be a warning. It doesn't have to be like, oh, you know, whatever. Don't say change your strings. And, <laughs> but what is what is a yes. thing that you wish you could tell your younger self that hey, you need to know about this uh, going down this twisted road that is making music? Teach the children's. Mm. <laughs> That's a tough one. Well, I guess if you really feel it in you that that's what you want to do, then pursue it. Uh, like as as you stated before, with um, you know how I did mention it was kind of I felt like it was kind of in me, and you know listening to metal as a child in my pop's car throughout the years really led me down that metal path in drumming. Um, I feel like whether it comes to any kind of music you want to play, if you feel like you can do it, then just go and try. Mm-hmm. And the worst that can happen is you suck. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, I, I sucked. I I got to the mm-hmm. point where I just kept going and going. And if you just keep trying and trying and you keep doing everything right, then eventually you get to a spot where you you will be more satisfied Obviously, you're going to be your worst critic. Right. I am. I'll play something and be like, man, that was the worst <laughs> I've ever played. And they'll be like, that was the best I ever sounded. <laughs> you know, so right. um, just keep going if that's really what you want to do. If, if, you, if that's not what you really want to do, but it's a hobby, then just treat it like a hobby, I guess. But if you really want to, you could pursue it as much as you want to. That's what I did. There you go. I'm going to piggyback real quick on what you said about that's the worst I've ever played. Mm. I think we've all had that moment where you get off stage and you're like, oh, God, I just blew that part. And some was like, hey, man, good set. Yeah. And you're like, no. <laughs> and, yep. and you yeah. want to be the worst critics, but, but everyone else is not not worse for us. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and all you can really say is like, thanks. Because right. you don't want to be the person saying, no, actually. Yeah, no, you yeah. don't want to point out your own you know, flaw. Hope you ever blew that part or, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, either of you? I'm sure I'll go next. Okay. And say something that I wasn't aware of when I started was how much time it takes to do everything. Recording is a big one. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, all the practices we have to do, all the traveling for gigs. Yep. Mm-hmm. It is a but job. But it's all worth it. Yeah. And yeah, if you want to do it, you should definitely give it a chance. Right. Yep. Okay, well... Okay, uh, a little incriminating here, but um, the best I got is this. I actually used to be a male dancer, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, yes. but uh, For, for Chippendales? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was actually... Well, I was Too more, <laughs> I, I, I was a go-go for seven years, but at one point I was one of the Las Vegas men of burlesque. Nice. Yes. And while I was doing that, um, there was a man named Big Carroll, rest in peace. He was actually one of the first American male strippers. And he was uh, he was uh, one of our mentors when I was you know when I was when we were doing sure. burlesque. So I remember at his going away party, we you know we had a little thing for him when we moved to Chicago. But the last words he said to me was, "Keep doing what you're doing and don't let anyone discourage you." There you go. And I've always lived by that. Yes, yeah. yes. Unfortunately, he did pass away. But um, I mean, he said, "I will always, I will always live, go by that." You know, don't let anyone discourage you, including yourself. Yes, whether yes. you have your clothes on or not, don't let anyone discourage you. Yep. I uh, <laughs> very early on in the history of the channel. I, I put out a video about imposter syndrome because I knew how much it affected me. And to this day, almost five years later of doing this channel and, and you know, I've gotten lots of love from the local scene and done, I've had some really cool, you know, opportunities because of it. Every week, at least once, I ask, I have to talk myself down from the ledge of just be like, why am I bothering? Why, uh, you know, and let me tell you. When, when you see a subscriber drop off, it hurts, man. You're like, what did I do wrong? Yeah. Oh, man. Totally so, it. <laughs> PSA, if you want to support someone, but you don't want to be notified all the time when they post videos, like me, when I post like three videos or four videos a week, uh, just ring, hit the bell and then choose none. You'll stay subscribed, but you won't get notified. It's a win-win, baby. <laughs> but at the same time, make that the clip if that's what you want to do <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeet anyway yeah. so, all right with that thank you very much for watching thank you for being on the channel thank yep, you thank you very us. much no worries make sure you check out the links down in the description so um you know you can find them in the meantime remember to be amazing and if you want to see more videos like this please click up here
If you want to subscribe, click oh, up, up or down. Up here. Oh, sorry. Up, up. If you want to subscribe, down. click over here and uh, ring the bell and, you know, choose none if you want. I don't care. Over here. And then if you want to hear my own music, which is definitely not black and thrash metal, <laughs> <laughs> click on the other side of Javier there. Other than that, have a great holiday season. And, uh, yeah, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye. Bye. See ya. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-bum. Beep. It's always one. Ha, ha, ha.